Well, as we notice that uh, many parents nowadays bring video material to the practice to show to us professionals, uh, we thought, could we use this? Because especially uh, infants who are at risk for delay, uh, we'd like to monitor them and see them more than once. But that can be quite a burden for both infant and parents. They have to travel and you find the right time. And we thought, well, perhaps home videos could help us. So what did you do in the study that you've now reported? Well, in the study we compared um, an assessment of gross motor development of an infant by, uh, made by a home video made by parents to an assessment um, made by a live observation by a pediatric physical therapist. And those two outcomes of one infant at the same time made, we compared to each other to see if uh, the home video method would also be a valid way to check gross motor development. And what did you find? Well, we found that uh, both outcomes are comparable, so that's quite hopeful, and that they, you can use it to uh, assess the gross motor development of the child. Now, you said that you were not trying to replace the use of, a, of an actual clinician meeting an actual child, uh, but could it, do you think, replace it? Uh, I don't think so. I think that's, um, that uh, the personal contact has a lot of value and it's always necessary to not only see the infant but also you can feel the infant or you can check the infant with your professional tests. But I do think in some moments, especially when you have to monitor a child more than once, you can say, well, uh, for the next time, send a home video and then we'll see each other in four months again instead of two months.